What's going on guys, Brian's here. Today's April 2nd, 2023, and we will be reviewing last week's price action on the SPY. So Monday, March 27th, all the way until Friday, March 31st, which was the end of Q1 for 2023. Now this video is a recap that I do weekly whenever I get the chance for the Quant Trading App members. However, I decided to release this video on my Trading Lit YouTube channel just because there's so much good information that I really wanted to share to some of you guys out there for free. The information I will really be going over is iron flies and butterflies. So if you trade butterflies, you're definitely going to love some of the content in this video. If you don't trade butterflies, don't worry about it. There's still a lot of great information to unpack. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Quant Trading App, the levels that you see on the chart are plotted from the QTA script. So QTA is just short for Quant Trading App. If you hear me say that throughout the duration of this video, this is referred to as the weekly sell zone. This is referred to as the weekly buy zone. We have a weekly support level, a weekly resistance level, and then we have some intraday levels as well as some levels that are built from the options chain that I will be going over throughout the duration of this video. Now, to keep the video a little bit more organized, I actually prepped it beforehand, and this is something that I use, which is Milanote. I used to use Notion heavily for my organization as well as my journaling in my personal life as well as documenting some of my trades but I decided I'm going to start restructuring some how I do some of the YouTube videos just to kind of keep myself a little bit more organized because there's so much information that I try to unpack and then I realize it's easy to get lost so this is really organized right here this is the entire week then we just have Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday and I'll be able to go over it uh, in more detail without getting lost myself so now let's actually jump in right here and what we have is the full week so this is what it looks like it's a little chaotic once all the scripts are on the chart but this is not what we see as the week is progressing because let's just say we're looking at wednesday's price action the script or code will not show the previous day's levels unless you decide to keep them on for yourself so i just turned them all on just to kind of get an overview for this week. We can see Monday here, the SPY opened and sold off to this intraday level right here. So these gray zones that you see on the charts, this is referred to as the intraday QTA zone. So we have potential support and potential resistance. Once these levels break, we look for a break and retest. If, if this level, say for example, was to break, and price hit this two-day anchored VWAP. So if we sold off, hit this level, and then bounce back here, we would look for a short, potential short entry for a continuation down to the buy zones. Just wanted to bring that to your attention as ways we use these levels. Now, as we scroll down here, this is the SPX. So what we were just looking at is the SPY, and this is the SPX. The blue level that we see on our chart is the weekly max pain. If you don't know what max pain is, I encourage you to look it up. And it is a theory, essentially, we can use it as a simplified way of thinking of it as a magnet for where price is likely to go. It's just not going to be something that works 100% of the time. Like everything, this was the end of the quarter expiration, but using it as a level as strong support and resistance is something that we've been tracking for a while within Quant Trading App, so we know it's a valuable level to have on your chart as it acts as a strong support and resistance, especially when it's in confluence with something else on the chart. What we can see right here as we uh, scroll down and we take a look at the SPX, something that's pretty significant is this level up here, this is referred to as absolute GAC. So this is the strike price on the options chain that has the most amount of gamma exposure. In this case, it was 4065 on the SPX. We are trained to know, to think of absolute GEX as one, a magnet, as it's a strike price that has a ton of liquidity. And then we also know max pain as a strike price to also be a place where there's a decent amount of liquidity as it acts as a strong support and resistance level. As we continue to scroll down right here, I just want to start by actually calling out something that was mentioned last week. So on the 23rd, which was the Thursday, I pulled pointed this out within QTA because this is something we also have access to. We were able to see the upcoming week's aggregate gamma profile. So I'll show you guys what I mean by that as I actually scroll over to the Discord. If I come to this right here and we see this is the next week. So this is actually looking at the upcoming week. So the so in other words, what we're looking at right here, if I were to actually open these, you see this is from the third to the sixth. So it's all of the expiration. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for the upcoming week. It's calculating all of those and giving us a measure for the gamma exposure for each strike. Now, obviously this video is under the assumption, you know what gamma exposure is, you know what price action is. It's not necessarily an introductory level video. I have a ton of other videos explaining some of these principles on the YouTube channel. But for any of you guys that are already experienced with this stuff, this is providing tremendous edge for us. So that's why I wanted to start with this because this was last week, Thursday. In other words, we were already aware of some of this price action or what was likely to happen for this week. So a key tip that I like to look for is in the background, we see these purple strikes right here. These are the strikes that have a ton of absolute gamma. This right here is the 
current spot price. So that is the, the price of the SPX when I took this screenshot, or in a sense, the screenshot was taken by QTA and sent to the Discord when the spot price for the SPX was at 39.36. And it's letting us know, hey, for the upcoming week, you guys might want to look into this strike price right here, which is 40.65, as it is the absolute gamma strike for next week. There's a ton of positive gamma at 4,000, letting us know, well, there's a ton of gamma in general, but it's positive, and that's how we know this spike right here. If this was red, then we know there's a lot of negative gamma at uh, the 4,000 level. So we know there's a ton of absolute gamma, there's positive gamma here, there's decent positive gamma here, and there's a ton of positive gamma and a ton of absolute gamma here. Whenever we see these things pointing up and pointing up, that is an indication usually that price will go in that direction because we see this 3,900 strike price right here will likely act as support because if the market was to retrace or sell off last week Thursday into Friday, it would take a lot of momentum. It would usually take some sort of catalyst. It would take a lot of selling aggressive selling to break this 3,900 level. So again, as I took this screenshot here, if we actually take a look at price action on the chart, we can see what happened as this was last week right here, and this would be the 3,900 level. So let me actually zoom out, and we see right here, this was 30, uh, 391, and then we have uh, right here would be, let me actually put the level on the chart right here, this would be 390. So, uh, doesn't have to be exactly. You guys get the point right here, it's off by two cents. But this, again, pointing this out, because that's something I like to do. I'm predominantly a swing trader, although I am trading a lot more zero DTE these days, as we'll be getting into the type of trades that I'm trading shortly. But this, when I was looking at the profile for, this is last week, Thursday, I'm already thinking what type of trades do I want to swing for the upcoming week. I'm kind of building out my game plan now. You guys can already see something here as, as we get into you know each day individually. Let me actually turn off the Monday uh, script, and now we're just looking at the, the uh, weekly levels from QTA. But last week, again, we wouldn't have had access to these yet as the algo generates these levels on a Sunday, giving us our game plan for the upcoming week. The gamma profile is calculated every day at certain intervals. The zero DTEs are calculated less around 15 minutes or so. The weeklies are calculated every 15 minutes also. It's archived within QTA so we can go back and back test it. And then we also have the upcoming week is constantly being calculated and it's sending the information to the Discord every four hours or so. So we have a plenty of different data points all sent to us pretty simply right here. So this is not something that is calculated. You don't have to go look it up and research. It's just being sent right here and you can check it in at any interval in which you'd like. So as we come back to this right here, last week, Thursday, I'm already aware of, hey, there's a ton of positive gamma at this level. So I'm showing the SPY for simplicity purposes, but it's letting me know if the markets did sell off on Friday down to a 390, it's not really likely that it would continue selling. So this ascends becomes a strong potential support level. I know this because of how much negative gamma there is uh, right here. And then on top of that, all this absolute gamma in the background, as well as other additional confluences and a little bit of experience. So what I said here is it would be it would be um, something to revisit after the morning session because it was still a little bit early in the day as I thought to open up a swing trade, you know, for for going up. So I was just saying, you know, after the morning session we can take a look at potentially opening some sort of small lotto play for the next weekend. So this is actually pre-markets before the market actually open, open I'm on Pacific time. So 6.30 Pacific time is when the market opens. And right here, four minutes before the market opens, again, already aware of this profile. And then we can see that it might be worth a cheap swing into next week. So those swings, how did they play out? I wanna go over some examples of different account sizes. So this right here is what's referred to as a long call butterfly. I retroactively put some of these prices in. So obviously I did not swing all of these positions here. I just wanted to show different examples for people of different account sizes, the way you can use this type of information to take advantage of a really nice swing trade opportunity, starting with the fact that we just uh, if we jump back, we can just see that again, this is going up, up, up. We see a ton of positive gamma here. We have a clear support level. We know where to uh, manage our risk if price was to go below. So as I scroll in here, this is a 20 point wide wing iron, I mean a long call butterfly. So what we have right here is this is our short strikes referred to as the body of the butterfly. And then this would be our long strike and our long strike right here. And the distance between each of these is 20 points. So if we take a look at the cost of this spread, because it is a debit, whenever you're trading long butterflies, a long call or a long put butterfly, this is the debit, so $1.65. And this is from the moments um, in which I 
decided if we scroll over here, we can see that this was on the 22nd. So let me just double check that right here. Let's scroll out. We have the 23rd. So this is a day before when I um, went back and kind of based this on just showing, uh, imagine if you were actually early with this. So this is not even an ideal time or the cheapest entry because that's something that I like to kind of gauge because not every time are you going to get the, um, the perfect entry. So I don't like to idealize things usually whenever I'm back testing or journaling. So we have is $1.65. As you can see, you would have gotten it a little bit cheaper. So if you waited to actually buy it on support, and then we can see this spread actually ended up hitting a high of $7.38. So as we scroll right here, that is at this level. So this was the Friday, which was the uh, 31st of uh, March. So as we scroll, that's around here because we ended up hitting for uh, 40 65 on the SPX. I can pull up the SPX if that might help some of you guys. Also, just so you guys can see. So right here, the market sold off to about 39.10. 39.10 is about the equivalence on the SPY 390. So they're about the same right here. There's just a little bit of a difference between the uh, SPY and the SPX. But you guys can see the, the point of this is, this is when we identified the potential trade opportunity. Market sells off, it hits the key gamma strike from last week, and then it bounces, and then it essentially goes on a nice rally all the way up to our strike price. And you didn't even have to wait all day Friday to take your profits. Right here was the decent place to take profits as it hit, as it hit the uh, strike price. And being able to notice and identify this pretty early means you're essentially buying this position when the risk is not really that high. The low in terms of the drawdown is something I also like to track. You guys can see that the low was 85 cents and that was right around here. So I believe that was the 29th of, um, which would have been a Thursday. So either the 28th or the 29th is when you experience a little bit of a drawdown. So in terms of how painful this position would have been, you would have been down less than hundred bucks, depending on how many you bought with the opportunity to make over $500 or so on the position. Obviously, if it pinned here, there was an opportunity to make a ton of money. Now, this is a really, really narrow butterfly, so the uh, probability of success is pretty low. So, But I wanted to show something for anyone with a really small account. 20 point wings, a buck 65, I'm pretty sure is something anybody with any type of margin account can margin account can trade because the general margin account, a small margin account is going to be about three grand, three to five thousand dollars. So it's not really that risky of a position for an account size on the smaller end. If we jump over, this is now a 40 point wing. So this is the same thing just to kind of speed speed through some of these now, just sharing some of my data. This is something I do at the end of every week. Over the weekend, especially on Fridays, I'll probably spend four hours or so after the market closes on a Friday and then maybe four to another eight hours over the weekend, analyzing different spreads, trying to see what I might have missed so I can improve in the future. And this is why it just becomes duplicatable for myself in the future. I know exactly what to look for. I have an idea of how much these spreads will generally cost depending on how far out the money I'm going. I'm sharing this again, so this video might be a little bit longer than expected, but I'm also showing you guys how I organize a lot of my data as well as the notes in which I take for myself. And this is something that I hope you guys take away from this. Even if you don't understand all of these spreads, it's something I encourage you guys to do is to review the previous week as the next time you see things that are similar it becomes even easier and easier and easier and you're going to remove a lot of the emotions out of trading so what we have here now is a 40 point wing butterfly so same thing targeting the same short strike so 4065 we've established why we're choosing 4065 it's because that's where the absolute gamma was showing for the upcoming week we're also taking a look at this is a week before the move actually happens and we can see that the drawdown in this case the lowest this contract hit was 342, and that was all the way over here. So not uh, not the position wasn't red for the the entire time. It was red a little bit here. It was green a little bit here. Even taking profits here, you're talking about a $200 return per how many units you have. So if you have one unit, this would have costed $635, and you would have been up 200 bucks. But that's obviously not the reason we would trade a butterfly like this. We're looking to really get the move in our direction towards the end of the week because that's how we have uh, astronomical or asymmetrical returns. We'll say so. In this case here, it hit a high of 23 bucks. So purchasing for $6.32 and then getting out around $20. And again, we the reason we would have been getting out early in the morning is because it hit our short strike. We don't really want to stick around uh, for, for a fly even like this that's pretty narrow, considering that we would have been holding it for an entire week. If we continue along now, this is a 50 point wing butterfly. So the last one was a 40 point wing. I didn't track the 30 point wing. Usually I would trade a um, 30 point wing also, but if we jump back here, you guys can see I also didn't go below 20 points. Below 20 points is too narrow. So if you, you know, 
if you do 10 points or 15 points, those are generally going to be pretty narrow. If you're swinging something five to seven days out, I would stick with 20 point wings or higher, just because your PL fluctuations are gonna be really wacky and it's gonna be difficult to hold, whereas this is a little bit more stable, as you guys can see here, especially towards the end of the week. So 20 point wing, Butterfly, if we continue to ride along, this is the 40 point wing. This is the 50 point wing. I'm gonna glance over this again to uh, save time here. This would be the fill. This is the lowest point and this would have been the high. Now we have a much higher probability of success because your tent is much wider or your profitability zone is much wider. So this is something obviously with a little bit of a larger account because you wanna be able to take some of the uh, pain or the drawdown or potentially even get another contract down at the lows here. And then lastly, we have a 70 point wing. So the 75, 75 point wing is my usual favorite for butterflies 75 points and 100 points if i'm doing uh you know 30 dte 45 dte i'll generally go with about 100 point wings anything less than that i tend to hover around the 50 to the 75 point wing if i'm doing a zero dte i'll generally do around 30 dt 30 wings if it's out the money if it's at the money i will also do 75 point wings so just sharing a little bit of again some of my personal uh, wing width uh, that I've been experimenting or with or using for butterflies over the past year and a half or so. So what we have is this one obviously cost the most and we can see the drawdown in this case would have been about 800 bucks per unit. So that's that's a relatively large drawdown. So that's why I started with the smaller one. But considering what you stand to gain in this case, it hit a 57 you know dollar high and exiting in this case you guys can see that the drop wasn't that significant even if you held a little bit longer to figure out if it was going to you know stay within this area or retrace back to 4060 as we can see the markets did not end up retracing it just continues to go higher and higher on friday so i wanted to bring that to you guys' attention just different ways starting with the um swing trade so that would be the overview uh recap for the entire week now I just glanced over at the time and then I realized this is probably a good place to actually stop this video because I didn't realize that I actually just spent a solid amount of time just doing the recap. So I will publish this video as part one and then we will jump right into the breakdown. So the week, as, as you guys can see, there's a ton of to unpack. That was just this slide right here. So we'll jump into the Monday. So I'm just gonna stop this video right here export it and then you guys will be seeing this one pretty soon and then we'll jump right into the uh, weekly breakdown if you guys liked this video leave a comment down below like the video share the video and then tune in to the second part